We're back now with Jeanette Mendez, who's the head of the political science department over at OSU, talking about the electoral college process mm -hmm. and its purpose. Also, uh, by the way, it's trending on social media right now with more than a million people talking about this, really wanting to know. And our viewers here in Oklahoma had some questions too. So let's pop up this first one. This was in from Lejan. She says, I realize this was created to give each state their fair share of votes by population, but has it outlived its usefulness? I mean, on the one hand, it has um, because there are parts of the process that we have changed over time. Um, and so we don't have the system that the framers set up. Um, and, and the framers were really unsure of this popular will of the people. Um, they said that they wanted that, but they set this up kind of as a check on the system. Well, um, the Senate, they didn't have elected popularly voted either, and we've changed that over time. So if we take that change um, and allowing that popular vote for the Senate, it would make sense that we could make that change and do this. Again, it just comes down to getting the support to do it. Um, and part of that argument really is um, that we do don't see this happen that often. So five times in the history of our country mm -hmm. isn't that often, but it doesn't make it any easier to explain when it does happen. Yeah, it, it is so rare. And speaking of that change, that perfectly transitions into this next question. Diana Williston wants to know, how do we get rid of it? Can you? And is there call for action to do so? There's um, conversations to do it. You have to go about it. There's a couple different ways. One is just a constitutional amendment. And to do a constitutional amendment, you would have to have Congress approve that with a two thirds vote in each house. And then it would have to get ratified by the state legislatures or you can call conventions of the state legislatures, 38 state legislatures, um, to pass that. But again, this is by people that are entrenched in the process. There is a movement out there that um, a few states, I think it's 10 states already, have signed onto an agreement that basically says, um, uh, we will elect by state, because within the constitutionality of our states, we will elect or we will get a, a portion all of our electors to whoever wins the popular vote nationally, not in our state. However, the 10 states that have signed on to this are all blue states and they're all highly populous states because they're the ones being affected. And so you still would need other states to do this, but it is up to the state on how they um, apportion their um, allocation of their electors. So we saw in Maine and Nebraska, they allow um, theirs to be split mm -hmm. between congressional district and then between who wins the popular vote. And so that might be an easier way to get it passed in your state legislature than abolishing the electoral college by and large through a constitutional amendment. That is much tougher to do. Okay, very interesting. And then I had one last thing. This is from Ashley Bell. I thought this was an interesting point. She says, when you live in a state like Oklahoma that has voted Republican since 1968 and you vote mm -hmm. Democrat, your vote does not count or go towards anything at all due to the Electoral College. People are less likely to vote if they know for a fact that their state is going to go in the opposite direction and their vote is going to go out the window. Do you agree with that? Um, I agree with it in principle, but I do think that if everyone is saying that, um, the vote totals would be much different. And so I still think if you believe in the process and you believe in your civic duty, it's on us to get out the vote and make sure that everyone does get out the vote. We don't have a true sense. So in Oklahoma, although we do vote um, more Republican, our voter registration is fairly evenly matched. Republicans finally just took the edge and tipped it ahead of the Democrats. Um, but if, if the Democrats got out the vote for everyone else, it would be much more evenly matched. And so I think it's an easy way to say, oh, I'm a Democrat, I'm not gonna vote in Oklahoma. But if you really look at the voter registration numbers, um, that should give Democrats a chance to say, hey, with some mobilization, there might be something here and I shouldn't opt out of the process. A very interesting um, system, a very confusing yes. system um, to say the least. So Jeanette Mendez, thank you so much for being thank with you. us all week long, really, uh, I appreciate for it. our election coverage. We know you must be exhausted, but we thank you for your time and your perspective as always.